Hello. 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 And I've just crashed the recording on progress warning that you get with um, Zoom when you start a recording. Tonight, everybody, I'm here with a very good friend of mine, Peter Doak from PTG Advertising, about who we're going to find out an awful lot more during the course of this conversation and conversations over the coming weeks. This is, in many ways, an experiment. We're trying out something new. And Peter has come up with the, the working name for now of business conversations. This is going to be a conversation about business. But it's not going to be Martin Gilchrist's conversation about business. It's going to be the two of us. And on that note, Peter, can you tell, enlighten, us, enlighten us a little bit more about what this is? Yeah, absolutely. So really glad to talk to you, Martin. It's um, business conversations. And as, as you say, you know, that's the working title until we find something that suits it better over, over time. Um, I, you know, really enjoy um, chatting with you and I get a lot of value out of our, our conversations. So I thought we might, you know, be able to um, create something, something cool. So um, in terms of, um, actually, what's the, what are we, we're, we're introducing ourselves, are we now? We are introducing, do you want, we're just, I think what we're doing at the moment is, we're sitting down and we're working this out, but we're working it out with everybody who's watching as well. Yeah, so yeah. comments, feedback, advice. You know, if you're watching this and you're seeing Peter and me doing that, this is the very first one of these business conversations. So what about if somebody would like to join us? Is that something that's going to happen, Peter? Yeah, uh, abs absolutely. And, and I guess, you know, in this first one, um, in this first episode of Business Conversations, we wanted to introduce ourselves for, for people who, who don't know us and also people who watch us 200 years from now in, on YouTube uh, whenever we're, we're, uh, we're long gone. Um, or maybe still here. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows the future? <laughs> Would you be so surprised? Would you? We could be here in like electronic form. <laughs> Our, 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 our whole essence could be uploaded to a massive database. <laughs> and this could be the starting point of that upload essence type stuff. The, the, I'm, I'm going to tell you that the conversation has taken a strange turn already. Okay. Um, I'd expect it to take certain, <laughs> <laughs> certain, certain odd avenues or, or cul-de-sacs as, as they may be. Bring um, me back in. Bring me back <laughs> in, Peter, before it goes too far. No, the, um, introducing ourselves to, to who we are to, to the people. Now, the likelihood is that anybody that's watching this for the first time knows exactly who, who you are, Martin. Um, but um, for everyone, um, my name is Peter Doak. I run a PDG Advertising. As Martin, you've, you've said, it's an advertising agency in, um, in Belfast. Uh, not in Belfast anymore. We're in Port of now, but we work globally. Huh? You're international. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And getting more international by the by the day and hour. So um, we'll have more to talk about on, on that a little bit later on. But fundamentally, what we do is communication between businesses and their customers. And we we help with with that. And I, um, I really love it. I really enjoy it. Um, I've been doing it for seven years. Um, got some team members now and we're looking for more. And we'll talk a bit more about about that but it's extremely exciting working with you know google ads with facebook instagram ads with email marketing it's it feels quite cutting edge and, and fast paced um i'm sure as you know martin wandered into there about you know uh you know artificial intelligence and uploading our consciousness at some point maybe digital advertising isn't as um the metaverse yeah, all of that stuff, you know, all of that, all that stuff about the metaverse. But what, what I do feels, you know, quite cutting edge at the at the time. And and who knows, maybe, maybe everybody does. But that, that's who I am. Martin, for people that don't, for the one person out there that doesn't know who you are, who are you? <laughs> who is that person? We'll track them down. We'll inform them. Who, who is Martin Lucas? For, for, first of all, I'm not really that famous. Might be infamous. But I'm certainly not well, not as well known as people who know me think I maybe am. My name is Martin Gilchrist. I am the practice manager at Gilchrist and Co. Chartered Accountants. Gilchrist and Co. is a marvelous 
Chartered Accountancy Practice, headed by the principal, Michelle Gilchrist, FCA. FCA means Senior Member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. She is a fantastic accountant. And I'm essentially her sidekick. I, I do everything that she doesn't do. And a big part of that is networking. So if you asked Martin Gilchrist, what is the fundamental thing that you do in business? It's networking, business networking. And if you went, Martin Gilchrist, what is networking? It's this. It is this. It is conversations with people who motivate you, who inspire you, who engage you, that make you feel good, that uh, educate you. I've been educated tonight on a couple of things. There's a couple of things we've, we've just had to work out. People that want to work with you. People that when you walk through the door, that you're glad to see and they're glad to see you, but they're in business. They're in business and therefore you can do business together. That is what Martin Gilchrist is all about. Networking for business. I think, I think that's what's very interesting to me and what's always interesting. You know, you're a successful businessman, been running uh, a successful business for 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 quite a while um and I'm, I'm very interested on your your take on on things and you know one thing that i picked up was you know a family what's it like what's it like working in a i i have no experience of of this because it's it's me and my team that aren't members of my my family what's what's it like running a running a family business I'm going to sound really corny here. I'm going to, you're going to get the vibe. I expect you are about to sound really corny if I know, if I know you. <laughs> here, can I, before I answer that question, I've got, I've got a question. Because one of the things Peter we said before we started this interview was that if something came up in conversation, we could pick, we could pull that string. Because what we're doing here is we're creating a tapestry, hopefully informing people, hopefully educating people, hopefully entertaining people. Otherwise, who's going to watch more than five minutes? But, but when we're creating a tapestry, and if we see an interesting thread, we will pull at it. And if the thread doesn't go anywhere and the tapestry stays together, we're painting a marvelous picture. Well, if you pull a thread, the whole thing falls to pieces. We need to pick ourselves up and start again and maybe go on a different thread. So you said something there that rung a little bell, that flashed a little light in my mind. And what you said was, Martin Gilchrist, you have a very successful business. You might not have said very, maybe I just thought very, but you definitely use the word success. It's what I, it's certainly what I meant. What is success in business? Is it, is it something that is subjective or is there a success rule that we should all be applying? A ruler, I've got one here. Should we all be applying the same ruler to what success is? What is success, Peter? I don't, I don't know. But I'm very interested in it because assumedly what we're all trying to do is be successful. I, I know I'm trying to be successful. I don't feel very successful. I, I, I feel failure on a on a daily, daily basis. <laughs> I I know that that's not right though, because I I keep a I keep a notepad, a notebook, and every so often. So every day I write down what's going on, not like a journal, not like a diary, but like things that I have to do during the day. And, and one thing that I have to do during the day is I, I go around every single customer during the day. That would be difficult for you. I know you have yeah. many more customers than, than I do, but we That's have, brilliant. you know, 16 at the moment. So there's enough room right now on the, on the book to write down 16 customer names. So if I go through every one of them and check them off and make sure that it's all, um, that things are running correctly, that we're interacting with our customers and keeping an eye on, on their accounts and doing what we need to do in terms of advertising for them, I know that things are right. But when I look back, even just two years ago, I see the volume of customers is double what it, what it was before. So I then go, so every day feels like a bit of a grind at times. I love it. I love what I do and it feels really good, but it doesn't feel successful. Like when you're, when you're, I, this is going to take a very strange turn um, in, a, in a moment. Um, but we, so when you're talking about what is success, is, is this success, right? So the bins in our um, office, um, 
didn't get up, didn't get emptied for you know uh, a few a few weeks anyway, and they needed to be uh, they needed to be cleaned out um, in in the office. So we needed to clean those out. So on a random Wednesday last week or so, I was elbow deep in this massive black bin, cleaning it out with bleach and things like that. And I was thinking to myself, is this success? Is is this is this the glamour of the Mad Men digital advertising you know unit that we're that we're creating? And and funny enough, I, I look back and I think you know that grind. The, the reason why we're growing and the reason why when you look over time the growth and bringing on new team members and getting better at what you're doing it's because you're putting in the hours on all parts of the business because you're working working hard on it and willing to work at every single level from the top strategic um decisions that need to be made to knee deep and elbow deep in uh in bleach and cleaning out cleaning out bins um i don't know martin if that answers what success is but that's that's the the journey I've taken on. What what do you think success is? I think success has to be subjective. What success to you will be different to what success to me will be different to you. what success to the richest person in Ireland will definitely be different to. And you can't use the same ruler to measure your success that uh, the richest person in Ireland or the the most powerful person in the world is using because you don't know what, what's going on in their lives. Like Donald Trump was president of the United States. Would you measure success, your success on the same scale or level or, or methods as him? Peter Duke runs PDG Global and you may well end up to be a multi-millionaire, but could Martin Gilchrist even start down that route? And would I want to? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with what Peter Duke does, but maybe it doesn't fit where I am now. I just turned 48 years of age, and fit to 15 years, 16 years running Gilchrist and Co. Um, enjoying what we do right now. So success is subjective, but I think this is what I genuinely think. I think you have to have an idea in your head of what success is for you, because we're all striving to be successful. And success may not be a destination, it may be a journey, but you have to know that what that journey, where that journey, what are the milestones in that journey? So at least you have some sort of satisfaction in your life because if you're always striving for a success that's outside of your reach, you're not going to be, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never, you're never going to get there. So success is different for all of us. I genuinely believe that you have to define it for yourself, right? What is success? And realize it's not a destination, it's a journey. And the very best thing you can do is find the milestones and identify those and enjoy reaching the milestones. Celebrate the, smiles, the milestone. Celebrate the small things. Celebrate the small things. Like Michelle and I probably go out far more than we should. I enjoy eating out. I enjoy going to a nice restaurant. I enjoy getting away for a weekend. And what triggers so sometimes going out for breakfast you know if if we win a new client let's celebrate that let's go out for a breakfast if uh, we win an award well obviously you're going to celebrate the award but even um, getting through a process in a business um, program or whatever that may be celebrate if um, we hit the monthly targets so what gets measured gets done you've hit the targets nobody else cares you know, you don't have to care, but do care. Go ahead and celebrate that. Have take that moment and enjoy your success. And I think a lot of the success that comes out of Gilchrist and Co. Because I believe we are an incredibly successful practice. The practice knows exactly what it is that we needed to. To, to, to many extents, is down to the fact that we celebrate the small things. We believe we are successful. Therefore, we are successful and if somebody comes along and says oh you're only a small practice you can believe about four members of staff and you only have 300 clients and blah, blah, blah. i don't care what they think we're successful and that's what matters to us that's what success is i think um so keep um keep keep celebrating the the wins um does, doesn't that come down to knowing what your wins are 
-hmm. you know, do does everybody always know what 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 the target is or what the what the goal goal is? I I'm not sure when I started my journey in business that I knew exactly what the what the targets were and what I was trying to trying to hit, um, except for try and take over everything all at once, all the time. Um, not necessarily to, <laughs> didn't work out ideally. Um, so now I have a set of goals that I want to work toward that I that I am working towards. And I, I split them down into, you know, milestones of maybe a three month month stretch, or this has to happen in this week, or or those those kinds of kinds of things. Um, interestingly, more often than not, I will hit the goal, but not necessarily in the timeline that I set for it. So I'll I'll accidentally hit it a couple of months after it's supposed to have happened, and I look back and I'll say, oh, I was really annoyed that I didn't meet that goal at that point but actually a little bit later down the line we we met it effortlessly like really really effortlessly so what i wanted to ask how do you know what your goals are what, what how do you know what the goals are and how do you know what the small milestones are and an additional question how do you keep focused on them how do you, how do you keep them front of front of mind absolutely brilliant question and we did spend time thinking about this right at the start of the practice um, I have to say, I have to qualify everything they say by saying everything we do has been, I'm sure we're all influenced. We are the culmination of all the people that have been part of our lives and the training and the education and the advice and the mentorship and all that type of stuff. But I haven't written down, sat down and read some wonderful book that told me how to do everything. To a large extent, Michelle and I took the advice, took the experience, took the knowledge that we have and worked it out ourselves to fit our own requirements. Okay. So the question is, how do we know that we've, what are our goals and how do we know that we've reached them? How do, we, how, how do we set those goals? The first thing, so we're all trying to achieve success or whatever that is. We're in business for a reason. What is the reason for your business? Some people talk about passion. The passion fizzles out. Doesn't last forever. You can't be passionate all the time. You'd be mental. <laughs> if you are, I'm passionate. Yeah, that's, that's just nuts. So when the passion <laughs> eases down, when you when you wise up, and, you know, bring your neck in a wee bit. What's left? <laughs> when you wise up, I love it. <laughs> yeah, what's left is the purpose. What's the purpose of your business? What's the reason? Resin that? Right? What, what are you there for? And the first thing we came up with was right. We sat down and thought, what do we want from our lives? We've come from very successful corporate careers. What do we want with our life? Why walk away from that? What's going to be better than what we have? That climbing this slippery pole to get rich and to have large teams and to have recognition. What's going to be better than that? And we painted a picture. And funny, I was telling this story today in, in down at the uh, Raise Ventures, was down at uh, Coordinating. And the picture is a cottage, literally a cottage with roses around the door, painted white, green door, one of those half doors, you know. And you go inside and it's a big, um, big old fashioned, fireplace with maybe an arger or a fire or something very comfortable very um traditional um family pets my i, I love irish setters a couple of irish setters lying on the floor and when you walk out the front door of the house all you can see is countryside so that's the cottage but we're a business that that's what's a cottage got to do with gilchrist and co we were calling our business a cottage industry for the modern age. So in this cottage at the big massive kitchen table, we are using cutting edge tech, computers, um, laser scanners, um, fiber broadband, uh, cloud-based computing, cloud storage, zero accounting, and um, Zoho CRM. We are at the cutting edge and we can work if it was necessary for anyone anywhere in the world that is as an internet connection in this world setting. And we are working at a very high level. So when we look at our services at Gilchrist School, we only do four things, self-assessment, corporation, bat and payroll. We are as good as anybody in PwC, KPMG, or any other practice you may look at, particularly for our clients, because we have 30 years experience 
working explicitly, specifically for professionals in independent practice based in Northern Ireland. And although we have clients all over the world, or well, we have some clients in different parts of the world, not, not, I wouldn't profess to say that half our clients are in the US or whatever, because maybe most of our clients, most of our clients are within 20 miles of us and that suits us just fine. We don't have to see them every day. They don't have to come into the office. They don't, we don't have to go and pick books up because we now have a resource in, in Gilchrist & Co. that we can work in this beautiful rural location that we have looking out over the moor surrounded by, I always thought, thought rabbits were nice until I realized they'd dig up your guard, but surrounded by wildlife and living pretty much the dream. So what's the goal? Cottage industry in a modern life. I'm going to cut this very short now because I appreciate it being off in the moment. Cottage industry for a modern age. That's the goal. We have achieved that goal. How did we get there? Well, the goal, the ultimate goal has to be made up. Because you, you don't just go from here to there. You don't just pop into a cottage with all these clients. How do you get there? What you do is you break that down into stages. So what are the stages that you need to work through to get the business to the point where you need to be? Well, the first stage was that we had to plan to leave the employment we were in. The second stage was we had to build enough clients to support us while we were in the transition to our new business. The third stage was growing on that client base and building our reputation and profile. The fourth stage was that when we had a client base, managing them and maintaining them and maintaining the services, the quality and the building the credibility of the business to get to the final stage, which is where we are now. But stages are big. You can't say, well, my first stage is and get enough clients in order to maintain us through blah, blah, blah. You then have to break that down. How do you get enough clients? What are the small steps that you can measure month by month, week by week, day by day, in relation to how you get? And I could go down into the granular detail of how we went about getting those first clients. Granular detail of how we go about our billing process. Granular detail of how we do ground control. And those things are all defined. And finally, we have fundamental measurements. Our fundamental measurements are we know how much we need to earn every year in order to maintain the business and lifestyle, so whatever that big figure is. And we simply break down, well, look, if we know that's how much we need, how much do we need a month? How much do we need a week? How much do we need to build today? And we just tick off those targets. And then out of that target, you have other targets like, is your credit control up to date? Have you reconciled the banks? Or do you reconcile daily? Do you reconcile weekly, monthly? We reconcile our banks on a daily basis. We invoice on a daily basis. We do our credit control on a weekly basis because we don't have that much stuff that's over here. Clients are very good at that. But we have these targets that everything has to be up to date by. We have our monthly billing finished before the first of the next month. We always have our monthly billing finished before the end of the month. And if you stick to those targets, everything else is gravy. Just keep cranking the handle and enjoying the journey. So something that's interesting, you, you make it sound effortless. So it, it looks effortless. It looks like it was easy. It looks like it has all been easy. And I just know, not that you've ever said it, but I just I, I haven't met a business person yet who hasn't, you know, found it difficult or had, you know, ups, ups and ups and downs. So for the benefit of me, I guess, and anybody else listening, has it been as effortless as it sounds like you're you're describing it? Or have you had to deploy determination and you know resilience throughout that journey? Absolutely not. There have been horrendous times in our business, not just with, not just with Gilchrist and all, but we have had horrendous experiences and, and a horrendous isn't too strong a word, like absolute crisis moments where we have had to say, we have to stop everything and deal with this issue because this is serious enough that it's going to have a, a serious impact on our business. Um, but the reason, and I, I know there are some people who are, will go out into the world and they will tell the story about really horrendous stuff that's happened in their business and, and, and they, they, they talk about it and they share it and all that good all that good stuff. The reason I don't do that, the reason I think anybody who comes across me will, will see that, will, will believe I'm a positive sort of character and um, that I always seem to be in good form or, or you know, enthusiastic or willing or whatever that case may be. And I think part of that is, it's the perception that people have of you. 
And when you're somebody's accountant, they're relying on you to know what to do. They trust you to deal with the difficult stuff and to be able to deal with the difficult stuff when it comes along. They don't want you to break under pressure or because they don't want to be burdened with the fact that, you know what, you might have too much on or it's too difficult or, you know, it's your accountant should be there able and willing to take the brickbacks. A big brickback was COVID. COVID was a massive problem for, for any accountancy firm because the amount of new stuff that was being thrown at us and contradicting information and, and potential losses to clients if things weren't done in the right way in the right order by the right date by the proper deadline with the proper information. That was an awful lot of responsibility that came out of nowhere that we didn't have additional resources to deal with. We just had to deal with it. But telling the, the, telling the coming out and going, oh, no. And there's nothing wrong. I've been. I don't mean that the way that came out. Sorry, I take that back. But I, I think that, I think, and I may be wrong about this. But no, I, I, just, to, just to jump in ever so ever so slightly, I get what you're saying. Like, it's fine to be, and you will of course be annoyed and upset at at, at things, um, for for sure. Um, but at some point, you'd have to, you know, start to deal with it. And start to to look at the positives and look at how things are because it will get it will get better. You know, things do get better. Things things. If I've learned anything, it's this will pass. Mm -hmm. I agree. It, it it does. Um, you can. Well, there's some, there's an expression about if you give it, you can survive anything if you if you give it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you just anything if if you if you give it long enough. Um, and the other thing is. People talk, there's, there's an expression, I, I can never remember the proper expression, but if you look at what's happening in a day or a week, you might be disappointed by worry what you've been able to achieve or what has happened within the last day or the last week. But when you look back over a year, you will be incredibly impressed by where you've, where you've come. I, and I, I think I, that's I think full, cir full circle of when you ask what's success and it doesn't feel like it in that moment. But when I look back at a year, a year ago or four years ago of our, of our notebooks, one that I've got sitting in front of me, you know, right now, um, lots changed, a lot's happened, and I'm we're in a much better place personal now. Personal success for you, Peter. So apart from the business, personally, that if I, if if I was used the cottage industry for a modern age as our example, what's your equivalence of that? Where where is satisfaction? Where is the destination for all of this for you oh for me so it's absolute and complete dominance of the advertising universe on planet earth and i say that with a smirk with a laugh but i believe we can get there and what that means is being being the number one advertising agency in uh ported iron to start off with and we're not <laughs> right now. We're not. We're not the number one advertising agency in in Portland. Would you say who was, or would you rather not? No. Here's here's what's worse. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I know there are other people around, but I'm too focused on executing right now and perfecting the craft. You know. You so, tell you. Who would you emulate? Who do you think is a good role model for where you want to get to? So Gary Vaynerchuk is part the reason why I've even started this journey, but also an exceptional role model for work ethic and, you know, hard working and, you know, digital advertising and, and attention. Um, so Gary Vaynerchuk would, would be, I would consider him, if not the best advertiser in the world um, right now, our best digital marketer perhaps is the better is the better better term. I, I would consider him at least in the top top three. But the journey that I've got has a lot of has a lot of steps. So success, you know, will I will never stop until we are the number one ad agency in Port of Iron, and then the number one ad agency in Northern Ireland, and then the number one ad agency in the whole of Ireland, UK, Europe, world, solar system. I don't know. And I know that might sound crazy and it might sound nuts but i think a lot of people who do things 
are, are crazy. A lot of people who um, achieve things are. So, so that's what and I really resonated whenever you said, you know, in your business, you believe you can do as well or better than anybody else in your, in your space. And I feel the thing that I'm building in PDG advertising competes on a global, global level. And we can prove it because we work with the corner shop all the way. We have customers in the Fortune 500 and it shouldn't be the case. We shouldn't be in, we shouldn't be such a tiny, tiny agency looking after accounts that are so super massive. So that journey is ongoing and exciting, but I don't know where it ends. I don't know what the stopping point, I don't know what the stopping, stopping point is um, of it. And, and it's something that we're just working on every day. And will you do it forever? Or yeah. will, you, will this stop at some stage? Now, I know no. not for the future, but I've, I've you seen have it. retirement in mind. No, I've, I've, I've seen it where people pick up, people picked up, you know, social media or they picked up NFTs or cryptocurrency or VR or any of those things. As a, as a vehicle for that time, they became an expert in it in, in that moment. And they said that they were the be all and, and end all of it. I'm a attention advertising conversion expert. And that's my, that's my game. So I can do that forever. I can do that using social media, using NFTs, using cryptocurrency, using the metaverse, all of those, all of those things. So in my mind, until we're the number one, until we've dominated every part of that, then there's no there's no stopping. There's definitely no uh, no no stopping point, and we've a long way way to go to even get a foot on that on that ladder. This this isn't a fair question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Um, you have known me now for many years. We've done a lot of stuff together in the real world and in the metaverse. I know it wasn't called the metaverse, but we started doing our stuff. We were pre metaverse. Lots of fun. Um, you know, you know what my social media profiles are like. You, you, you've got a gist for the type of stuff that I post. You probably see some of it popping up every now and again. What am I doing wrong? I think you're doing anything wrong. Everybody, it's, it's more what it's more what you what you think you're doing wrong. So what 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 do you you know were were because I look at you and I say. You're the go-to accountant on my network, so you know that's that's what I see. And to me, that would be if I if I was the go-to advertiser on. My, I'm not even. I don't even think I'm the go-to advertiser on my network. So if I was the go-to advertiser, I would go. That's, that feels like success. That feels like I'm doing really well. Um, so from my perspective, doing great, doing fantastically. And there's no, there's no. It, it depends though. If you want to be the number one viewed platform on LinkedIn, or you want to be the number one Twitter account, or you want to be literally classed as the number one accountant in, in Northern Ireland, what are you doing wrong in terms of PR and perception? That's a different conversation. It's really back to you. What, what, where do you want to go? And then we can see, we can look at what you're either doing or not doing that's stopping you from, from getting there. Um, Batted right back over there at you, uh, Martin Gilchrist. <laughs> you dealt with that very well. It was an unfair question. So, uh, uh, fair play. Here, I would love to delve into that, but I know we have very tight for time. And there's one thing I definitely want to talk about, and I want to give you an opportunity to talk about anything you want to talk about as well. And the one thing I definitely want to talk about is digital DNA 2022. Are you going, Peter? For sure. I was really pleased to see free tickets being announced. Um, talk about being a global digital advertising entrepreneur star, but you put something free of what I want in front of me, I'm, I'm all in. So so yeah, what, what's your thoughts on it this year, Martin? I have been to every single, and I've always followed my, follows my feet at all, has heard me say this about 50 times over the last three days. I have been to every single digital DNA, right from the very first one that Gareth Quinn held 10 years ago. 10 years ago was the very first one. It was a room in an office somewhere, nondescript, but it was it was good then, and it's an awful lot better now. 
I hear some people going hit things on the end and say it wasn't what I thought it was, or it was too much noise, or whatever it was. There's, there's always reasons to complain. But I genuinely believe that if it's it's a thing, it's it's my go-to event in Belfast each year. Because if you work it, it will work for you. You have to work it. You have to go there with the right attitude. You have to put a bit of effort in. You have to be positive and you have to be willing to engage. But if you don't do those things, fantastic thing. Two examples of things that actually benefited me massively this year from last year's digital training. And there was more than two, but I'm going to pick two. The first one is I met a guy from, I didn't even meet the guy from BR Park on in digital data. I bumped into somebody else who had been talking to him. And they told me about this thing called VR Park. VR Park is um, an online software. It's, it's a virtual world where you rent and have an office, you can create an office. And because of that conversation, I reached out to VR Park and I told them that we were doing a workshop or another idea that I'm working on. VR Park has essentially sponsored workshop ever since then. And we have been able to create, and you, you know, I think you have an office, you do, I think. I, I know you have an office in there, Peter, in our workshop co-working space in the virtual reality. That is entirely down to the fact that I was a digital DNA master. The other person I met was a guy I actually met him again this morning, David Elon from Belfast Met. Absolutely fantastic guy. And if you're Bel if you're a digital DNA this year, try and reach out to David. Tell him I sent him your way. It's David Shaw. No, David Keelan. David Shaw is another good guy. <laughs> There's so many. Sorry, mix, mixing, up, mixing up all the David. You said David Peelan? Keelan, yeah, from Belfast Met. Yeah. And he is involved in outreach to business. And if you need training for yourself or your staff, we've benefited. We had a graduate level intern that was working with us last year, a fantastic fellow called Ryan O'Neill. And we were able to put him through intensive digital marketing, social media market training for free, no cost at all to work short with a um, highly experienced industry professional. The type of uh, training and, and experience that you just can't, couldn't pay for it, it would have been outside our reach. But we were able to get it for free for David Gillen, who I met by the happenstance of going up to their stand, stealing one of their pens, and having to come eating their sweets and then having a conversation. Now, what is it you guys actually do? That's two examples of many, many examples of where digital DNA benefited me last year. But this year, this year, the 10th anniversary of digital DNA is going to be incredibly special from my point of view, because I was going to have an after party on the first night, but I was speaking to some friends, and now we're going to have something that is much better than an after party would be. We're going to have a collaboration type event. It's, it's called a hub tour. And I'm not going to say any more on that because we're, we're going to be releasing the details of it tomorrow, actually. And anybody who watches this video, who buys their free buys, gets their free tickets for digital DNA. If you want to come with me, and you're coming on the, the tour as well, Peter. As I, I, would, I would look forward to it. Yep, you're, man, you're just one example of the good guys that are coming on the tour. That's uh, um, the good people. I'll, I'll not do a list now that will be available on the event page. It is going to be digital DNA during the day, I'll be good. But if you're thinking to yourself, when do I get to have those personal conversations? When do I get to relax with people? When do I get to go and do something where I'm not on show or you know doing the work bit? Where do I get the after party feel for digital DNA this year? Watch out for what we're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm working with Gilchrist and Coast Committee, working with yourself. Peter, you're, you're going to be part of what we do. Obviously, you're going to be coming on the tour. Um, and other great businesses to put on something where you can do that, where you can have those more casual, more relaxed, free pizza, free beer type conversations, ending up um, by about nine o'clock. If you even if you don't want to go up to, you'll find us in Chicken Uh Pizza, pizza and beer always gets people, yeah. and, well, me in, in particular. Maybe we could get people not to go, and I could just have all the. <laughs> <laughs> the empty promotion of it. My, my buzzer went. Does that mean we're nearly out of time? Yeah, we 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 are. Is is there anything else going on in your world that you want to let people know about, Martin? Oh, there's so much, Peter. But I think I want I want you to have another opportunity to finish it off because I feel that I have I've been a little bit greedy with the time. 
Not so, at all. Not at all. It's been good. Good, good day. About good. how this is going forward, and where we go to next, and what people should expect. Yeah. Well, absolutely. So, um, just some stuff that's going on. So we're at PDG. Um, a couple of things happening. There's a lot of things happening. There's two things that happen in particular that I'm really looking forward to. Um, Alistair Luke from Attention X is visiting our office tomorrow in Port Arne. He's going to do... The Where did you meet him? Alistair Luke? Where did you meet him? Good, 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 uh, good, good question. So we met Alistair at the in, inaugural, is that the right word? Or the yeah. first workshore co-working event um, in Newcastle uh, run by Martin and works your team um, and it was great so we well now Alistair and I worked together years ago um, <laughs> so Martin, Martin and Alistair worked together to create a really cool video on the work short event so I do a podcast called PDG Advertising podcast I love doing it it gets two to three listeners across the course of a month <laughs> it's, that's more the we'll get but it's a joy to do it's a documentary of the the rise of of pdg or and hopefully not the rise and fall of, of pdg hopefully the rise and rise so but what we're going to do is we're going to do it in video format and we're going to introduce ourselves to the world and we're going to do an episode of the pdg podcast and my team member neil is going to be on that uh video podcast tomorrow so i'm excited about it Nate's excited about it. Alistair's excited about it. So we'll see how that how that rolls. Also, we're looking for team members. So with our growth, um, we need more people. Uh, so if you Google Peter Doak or PDG Advertising, you'll find me somehow. And if you're really interested in digital advertising, get in touch. We'll we'll talk um, and you know we'll um, look at opportunities that are you know in PDG at the at, at the moment. Um, we've got a few that are advertised uh, at this the moment. So, Peter, this will be going on YouTube. Can we put that link in yeah. the video? Is that yeah, abs absolutely. So there's, there's there. jobs that are yeah somewhere, <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll definitely be um, we're we're definitely looking to grow, and we don't mind where we're growing from. Um, another human in the PDG that's passionate about digital advertising is is important. So. Um, that that's what's that's what's going on and look i guess this has been i don't know about you martin this has been super enjoyable for me to hear um more about what's going on in your world and and what's happening and i guess there's a few ways that these business conversations will will go we're going to do them for as long as we uh want to do them and um, for we, we plan on doing them doing them weekly and there's there's a couple of things one if you want to come and chat to us on one of these uh on one of these conversations let one of us one of us know um we will uh, definitely want to get some guests on over over time and have some business conversations like this conversation is very much about introducing what this is and who we are but in time you know perhaps we have a after dna business convert digital dna business conversation or or something big happens and we want to have a have a catch up about it. We'll do it online and, and on this uh, and on this channel. So Brilliant. definitely subscribe, like, and share and comment and let us know what you think. And we will be back likely next week um, with another uh, business business conversation. Martin, last word to you. Um, we've one minute thirty four left of our of our time. Um, but last word over to you. Um, over to you. Um, I suppose the final thing I want to say is that this has to benefit the viewers, not just us. I have enjoyed it. I love talking to you, Peter. I love the conversation and the, the directions that these things go. But it's really, the reason we're doing this is so that other people will watch it and get benefit and value out of it. And the way we find out is by people engaging, commenting, sharing, and joining us. I would love to see someone or a couple of people join us every week to talk about the things their passion and their purpose and let us find out more about each other and let us share each other's stories. I, I think that that's where the real value. I don't think this is going to become a solely educational platform. I think it's it's something more than that. It's about getting to know people, getting to understand what they're about and building a community and connections. And if nothing else, if nothing else, a real value from this is I'm better connected to you, Peter. Every time we do something together, and I apologize, how many times does that be? Every time we do something together, 
um, I feel I've got to know you a little bit better. And uh, that by itself is a good thing. So I want to do that with more people. I would love that to be what this is about, getting to know more people better and be people getting to know us better, find out whether we're a fit. Might not be, but hopefully we are. And we're using that to connect. So that's my final word for this evening. Sounds wonderful. Well, that, if you can hear it, was perfectly on the on the timer of 45 minutes. So um, we keep our we keep our word, we keep our time well, and, and that's fantastic. So what uh, all that is left to say is thank you so much for, for listening and watching um, us in this instance. Martin, thank you uh, so much. And we will be back uh, next week with another with another business conversation. Thanks everybody. Bye. Cheerio.